everyone, welcome back. My name is Mel and welcome to my first SPFBO or self-published fantasy blog off reading blog. If you guys have no clue what this is about, it is a self-published fantasy competition hosted by Mark Lawrence that is done every year. There starts off with 300 participants and it is whittled down to the top 10 who are then pitted against each other to decide what is the best self-published fantasy. These books are not all published in 2023, 2024. It can be a number of years. It's a free-for-all submitting them. It's a ton of fun to see what we end up with. I was part of Cassidy from Covers with Cassidy's original team that helped her pick her semi-finalist and then she read from those to pick her finalist which was a ton of fun. I love being able to participate in that and last year she hosted SPFBO Cassidy's version and since she was an official judge this year I decided to take it over and do Mel's Takeover which has been a lot of fun. I have some amazing people that are helping out. This is very unofficial. We're just reading them for fun in order to kind of get the word out and bring more attention to some books that people may or may not be aware of just kind of spread the love as you will so this is definitely not an official competition but I've had a ton of fun doing it so I will link the announcement video for that down in the description box in case you guys want to check, check out their reviews so far because they have been absolutely incredible and I just love reading and seeing what everybody is thinking of these books so it is time for me to tell you guys what I have thought of the first five books from the finalist batch I did not pick these in any particular order I just kind of was like yeah that one sounds good and picked it up so without further ado let's just get into my first book which was daughter of the beast i have now officially started my spfbo reading i meant to start this way before now but better late than never and i have started with the daughter of the beast by ec greaves this is bookborn's pick and i've been really excited to read this one the author was kind enough to actually send me the whole series in paperback which i have but it's like in there and it's late and yeah i will show that to you guys in the near future but for tonight I've been reading it on my Kindle and this is following a young girl whose village is destroyed by a monster and she is captured and then raised by these monsters that is really all that I've gotten in the first 15% and that's as far in as I am now so definitely when I continue on a little bit I will give you guys a much better synopsis than that but so far I like but am not completely enamored with this yet I will say that part of my issue I think is with the writing it does feel a little bit too flourished for me. I'm not a very big over embellished reader. I don't love when the prose has a lot of like added adjectives and things like that to make the writing a little more like long I guess. I don't really know how to explain that but I do feel like the writing sometimes is a little over embellished for me. I am also struggling some with the dialogue and I find that that is a really hard thing. Like if I'm going to struggle with the writing, the dialogue is one of the first things that I do tend to notice just because dialogue's hard. And in this, it just feels a little bit formal and a little bit forced so far, but we really haven't had a lot of dialogue with her other than with one particular character. So maybe it is just that character's dialogue that I'm struggling with a little bit. At the first 15%, we haven't really done a whole lot, but it has been kind of a breakneck speed where her village is destroyed and then she's escaping from the cell and then we're kind of traveling a little bit and I think that the pacing I do wish would slow down just a little. I would love to have seen more about her in her village with her friend. We open with them like playing pretend and I think that that scene was a really cute fun scene to open on but I do wish we had gotten a little bit more about life in the village and seen her family and really gotten to know her a little bit better before the village was destroyed and we moved into the rest of the plot. I think that that just would would have helped me ground a little bit better and get more invested in this in her as a main character but yeah I'm only 15% of the way in so I have just now gotten a little past the second stage which is the second part of the story. Okay so it's been a little while since I chatted with you guys whoops but I have officially finished Daughter of the Beast by E.C. Greaves and I did want to give you guys a quick update on that. This is one that I think just falls into the solid category of this didn't work for me. As much as I wanted it to there were were certain things that just are not really my preferred way of storytelling. I did really like some of the like battle scenes and action scenes. I thought that those were really well written and a lot of fun. I liked our characters relationship and the fact that there was a pretty heavy focus on like the relationships between these like, 
characters and these different species and how all of that interacted. This is definitely a brutal world so it's not one for the faint of heart but somehow he managed to find some way to have friendships and things like that within this world which I thought was really good. A couple of things that just did not work for me personally was the writing style. It did feel like it was pretty detached and our main character felt very detached from the goings-on of what was happening. He did mention that that was an intentional um, Slavic type storytelling method but it just does not work for me. I like for my main character to be in the trenches and dealing with things and going through things but I just felt like she was kind of on the periphery watching everything and I never really felt like I was there because I never really felt like she was there and so I did struggle with that a little bit. The writing for me I think again just pulled into that detached nature. I never felt like our character like I really understood her and I think that that was one of the hardest things for me personally is I like to be able to relate or at least feel like I'm in it with my main characters even though I'm not necessarily a character driven reader that is something that I look for and want out of a story. I do think that you could see the like inspiration and everything to this. I think he did a good job with that but overall the plot of the story just never really kept a good pace for me. I found myself getting interested in some scenes but then having long periods of time where nothing was really happening. We were doing a lot of talking and it just never gripped me in a way that made me hang on to it and want to continue reading. So unfortunately this one was not a win for me. There were just a lot of things that I think were very not a male type of book. This one did end up getting a 5.1 overall from me. It is a higher two star. I think I would recommend this to people that are looking for an adventure story but don't don't necessarily need a lot of like high action and somebody that is looking for a story told in a unique way. I think that that would be probably who I would recommend this book to. Also really quickly while we are here I wanted to tell you guys that I have also finished Cold West by Clayton Snyder. This is one that is just a super quick read. The audio took me about an hour and a half to listen to so I didn't really update you guys in between because it was so short. This is a western inspired fantasy about a husband that has just recently buried his wife. Now he has two sons to feed and a bounty that he is sent to collect but a bounty is never just a bounty and he is sent off to do some things that he never thought that he would have done before and how far is he willing to go. This one was one that I I honestly did not think I was going to enjoy. Western is just not usually my thing, but I ended up liking this one more than I thought I was going to. There are some really gruesome and dark imagery in here. This is definitely not a lighthearted Western fantasy that's like an adventure style. There are some dark moments in here and I did like, I guess, is a term that I could use to describe some of that imagery. You guys know that I like to read horror and so I felt like there were some horror like imagery in here. I will say that overall though this one was not my favorite. The writing style I did struggle with just a little bit. I listened to it and the audio took me a little time to like get my bearings but once I did I found that it was an easy listen but unfortunately the story just never really took me by the claws and made me want to continue reading. The plot was okay but it just the pacing didn't move me forward in a way that I was like oh I've got to pick that up I've got to pick that up. So this one is overall also going to get around a five for me it's going to be a higher two star. If you are somebody that likes grief horror and you don't mind a western setting and a shorter story then this could work well for you. It was a little too short for me not quite at fast enough paced for me but I do think that it had some good moments overall. So I think that those are my last two updates for now. I'm trying to decide what I'm going to read next. I am on the fence between Hills of Heather and Bone and Murder at Spindle Manor but I've heard some really good things about Murder at Spindle Manor. I've heard it's a lot of fun. It's a murder mystery but make it monsters. I just feel like I need a light murder mystery for right now. So I think that that's going to be what I pick up next and I am very excited to read this. Good morning friends. I'm going to put my hand up here to block the glaring sun that I did not realize was sitting here but I'm on my way to work and I wanted to give you guys a quick update on Arrival Most Vile. This is following a group of friends, a group of shop owners. We have like a wand maker and a potion maker and it opens with them all looking across the street to try to figure out what the new shop is going to be and then they quickly realize that it's going to be a new potion shop which is going to compete with our current potion shop owner Ambrose. This is a very 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 
very, very cozy story. It reminds me a lot of Legends and Lattes. It has that same similar feel. They're shop owners. They're trying to like figure out how to make the most of their profits. There is a rival component to it as well. And I believe it is going to be a gay romance, a male male romance, if I'm not mistaken. So there are aspects of this book that I think are fun and think are well done. For me personally, it's, it's way too cozy. And you guys are not going to be surprised by that answer, but it's just too much, too cozy, too not enough plot, not enough stuff actually going on. It's mostly just their day-to-day -day interactions and their day-to-day -day, like back and forth of who's going to be the, you know, top shop owner this week and who's going to be the top shop owner this week and squabbling amongst the small town, that kind of thing. And so I am just finding myself to be a little bit bored by that. It is also very repetitive right now where we're kind of doing the same scenes and the same things over and over and over again. So I'm a little bit more bored by that because I feel like I've read the same stuff. But overall, it's pretty well written. Um, I am listening to the audiobook and that's been enjoyable as well. I don't think it's a bad book. I think it's just going to be a book for a very certain type of reader. And I would recommend it to those readers that enjoyed Legends of Latte's Travis Baldry. So I'm going to finish it today. It is not a very long book. I think I have like an hour and a half left of the audiobook. So I'm going to finish that up. And once I am done, I will let you guys know what my final thoughts are. Okay, so I'm trying the Sweetheart Cold Brew, which says it is Red Velvet Cold Brew with cream and house-made vanilla velvet cold foam. I don't know what that is, but it sounds fantastic. So we're about to see, but I don't know what Red Velvet Cold Brew is. I don't know. It sounds good. Obviously, it's February if you guys haven't figured that out yet. And so we are in the month of love. And so all of their, like, house drinks for the month are February, like, love themed and I don't know that well, sounds good we're gonna try it good morning. good morning I think I'm gonna try the um sweetheart cold brew okay what size um medium, medium. all right anything else that's it Six two. thanks thank you okay this is pink I was not expecting it to be pink um okay I'm a little scared but let's try it that's actually really good I don't know what's in it but it's really good I was not expecting it to be pink and all around them, patches of deep blue moss glow as if the night sky had grown in pink splatters across the chamber. The pulse was so soothing, so reminiscent of fireflies in the lavender fields, that Ambrose had expected to hear a cricket song filling the air, or even feels the warmth of it, reassuring. I haven't met you, family, but I think that people care about you. Would rather you try a dozen more cricket in the miserable city of this one. Eli, not it. Try. So I did finish Arrival Must Val on my way home from work today, and it was pretty much exactly what I expected it to be. A super cozy male-male romance about two rivals that learn, that fall in love. And I think that at its core, like, it does exactly what it set out to do, and I can 100% see how people of cozy fantasy will enjoy this book. It is set in a very similar type world to Legends and Lattes. There are orcs, there are goblins, there are um, elves, and a bunch of different little creatures running around rather than just like your typical like epic fantasy world and it's just very small town very cozy I will say that I appreciated the way that it didn't really have a true third act breakup like everything made sense for the characters and made sense for the story and was well set up and I thought that that was extremely well done mostly this book just did not work for me because it was way too cozy and again you guys probably expected that I'm just not a huge cozy reader in general so really quickly, let's talk about what I am going to be giving this book as far as rating goes. I think I've already told you guys this, but just in case I forgot, SPFBO is rated out of 10. So the scores are tallied based off of one to 10 and then the highest score wins. I like to use, sorry, you guys are kind of, let me sit you here so that you can be a little bit more stable. I like to use a rating system that takes into account several different factors and then gives me an average. So for the characters, I think I'm going to give this a seven. I thought that the characters were pretty well developed overall. They didn't really change their motives made sense to me throughout the entire story. The writing was pretty good. I think I'm going to give it a seven as well. It was a little bit repetitive at times. There were certain phrases that would happen and then it would immediately say again. But overall, I think that the writing was pretty good. And then plot is where for me, we're going to see points deducted because it was just lacking. 
the plot in this is the romance. It's not really, there's no grand plan. There's no grand scheme. There's no thing that we're trying to achieve other than getting these two characters together. And for me, that just wasn't quite enough to really keep my attention and really keep me engaged. So I think for that, I'm going to give it a six. I also think I'm gonna give the setting a 7.5. I could see this like small town shop owner squabbling kind of thing. It wasn't, like I said, my favorite setting, but I definitely can see where it was pretty well developed. It, it's, there's not a lot of world building to build here, but I think that it gave off the cozy vibes like it was trying to do. I wish it had been just a little bit more developed. I wish we had learned a little bit more about the shops themselves and kind of had a little bit more backstory to that. But overall, I think it was good. And then for enjoyment, again, for similar reasons, it's also going to get a six for me on enjoyment. This is going to come out to a seven, which makes sense for me. That's around a three star. This is a book that I would recommend to a certain type of reader, just not a book that I loved and that's okay. But I think if you are looking for a more romantic Legends and Lattes, I think this is gonna work really, really well for you. I see why people would love it. It just wasn't the book for me. Hello, hi, I just wanted to give you guys a quick update because I'm around halfway through Last Ranger and I am enjoying it more now than I was before. I think the pacing is pretty good overall. It does feel a tad too long in place but for the most part, the magic system is really cool. I'm not usually a fan of healing magic, although I don't mind it when it's done the way that it is in this book. Basically, if you give life, then something is taken from the area around you. But the way that some of those consequences are applied is actually really interesting and not something that I've seen before. So I'm quite enjoying that. My biggest issue right now, I think, is our main character is kind of insufferable. Like she's just not, she's making a lot of like bullshit headed moves and she's not really thinking anything through before she does it despite being shown time and time and time again that her prejudices may or may not be accurate she is just holding on to that steadfast she doesn't want to listen to anybody she doesn't want to question anything and that's a little bit frustrating is when a character doesn't seem to be growing as the book progresses I want a little bit more character growth from her because right now she's driving me crazy. But other than that, I am having a pretty good time with it. I'm excited to continue reading and I'm hoping that I can get it finished here pretty soon. Good morning, friends. I really quickly wanted to give you guys an update because on my way to work this morning, I was able to finish The Last Ranger by J.D.L. Rossell. I ended up enjoying this one. I think so far it's probably been the my favorite of all of the ones that I've read. I think that, like I told you guys before, the magic system was really, really cool. I liked the world building and I thought that the writing was really well done. That Imogen Church narrate the audiobook, who I absolutely love as well. So I really enjoyed all of that. I think my main issues just lied in not really being able to connect fully. Our main character reads quite young, even though I think she's actually older. And I just never really was able to get on board with her motivations. She just kind of bullheaded, charged into everything. And even though we did get some character development over time, I never was able to fully connect with her character. I also thought that while the pacing was good and that I was always entertained, I was never really super low points. There were never any like super low points. I do think that it was a little chaotic at times where we were changing from scene to scene to scene and we weren't exactly getting a lot of like flow into each scene. So overall, I think that I'm going to be giving this one a three star. Characters I'm going to give, I think a 6.5, either 6.5 five or a seven. She did have development over time, but the characters were definitely the point for me where I felt like it was the weakest. I'm going to give the plot a seven. I do think the revenge plot was good, even though, like I said, the pacing sometimes was back and forth. The world building is a seven. I think that it was well done. Writing is an eight for me. I think that it was extremely well written. And then overall enjoyment is going to be about a seven. I enjoyed it, but it wasn't like a new all-time favorite for me. So in the end, that's going to give it a 7.1 or a three star. And like I said, yeah, I really enjoyed this one. I think that that if you are a fan of a very feisty main character, if you want a fantasy that's a little bit of a different setting, if you don't mind an adventure story, I think that this one could really, really work for you. So I'm on to the next one. I don't know exactly what I'm going to read next. Once I figure that out, I will let you guys know. But for now, I'm going to head on into work and we'll chat later. Hi, hello. Yes, I felt like I should address in this vlog that I do have new hair. I cut my hair, got some bangs. I'm still figuring out how to work it. So that's why it's like in my face and it just kind of looks different is because I don't know what I'm doing with it yet. I want to update you guys because I am about 10% into Murder at Spindle Manor and I'm enjoying this one so far. It's definitely that gas lamp, murder mystery, like Agatha Christie vibes and I think that the setting and the vibes so far have been 
amazing. I definitely can feel like I'm in this era. I feel like I'm in this manner. Basically our main character is some kind of hunter. We don't really know 100% sure what yet, but we know that she is some kind of hunter. And she goes to this inn and there are 10 other guests staying. She and her coachman are one of the few that are there. And we pretty much spent the first 10% kind of learning and getting to know our characters. And the very end of where I'm at, she says that she is hunting a monster and it could be any of the 10 guests. I just think that setup is a lot of fun. Obviously there's nothing new and different about it, but put a fantasy twist on it. And I think it could be really interesting and a lot of fun. The writing so far I am enjoying. I do think it is well written. It's not like, I'm not just like gripped, can't put it down yet, but I'm only 10% of the way in. And a lot of this has been set up getting to know our characters. I have no guesses on who could be the monster or anything like that yet. But we do know that this is a group of people that are traveling with one another. I think like part of a high society, it's not just a bunch of strangers, which I also think is really interesting as well. So I need to, I'll probably check in with you guys about the halfway point, but I wanted to give you some initial first impressions. Why is it that my dog always decides that it's time to squeak his toy when I'm trying to film an update? It literally happens every single time. Hi friends, I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on Murder at Spindle Manor. I am about halfway through this book. I'm having a really good time with it. I am a little struggling with the pace right now because we're kind of at that point where a lot of what we've done so far is like we've told who all the characters are and you kind of had to go through your character list and talk about who the archetypes are and what everybody's purpose there is and how they get along with one another. And then something happened and now we're kind of in that moment of the interview views and like where was everyone setting the stage on where they all were in the moment and that kind of thing. So while I am really enjoying learning about all of that, I am ready for something to pick up and happen. I want to know more about this monster. I want to know more about the murder mystery and are those two going to tie together and try to figure out who done it. And I'm just waiting on a little bit more. I think of the fantasy to kick in too. But at the same time, this is very murder mystery-esque. I feel like it is definitely very much what I expected it to be. It feels like Agatha Christie. It feels like gas lamp. It feels like a just cozy murder mystery. And excuse you, can we not do that right now? Okay, I think what I was saying was it, it feels very much so like I think it intended to do. I think that the author is doing a very, very good job of of really just like leaning into those cozy murder mystery vibes. I, I love the isolated setting. I don't think that I've mentioned that so far that this is all set at Spindle Manor. So it's definitely very isolated. There's a storm raging outside and that none of them can leave. And I think that that's just adding to the ambiance and I'm having a really, really good time with that so far. So I'm gonna go finish this off. I think I have about third, about an hour left of it. It's a super, super fast read. Once I'm done, we'll come back and we'll discuss my final thoughts. Okay, so I'm here to give you guys my final thoughts on Murder at Spindle Manor. I keep trying to say Myrtle at Spindle... Sp I can't hardly say this title. <laughs> But Murder at Spindle Manor was actually a lot of fun. I knew that it had been kind of the general one that everybody was really enjoying. I knew that it was one of Cassidy's favorites. So I was really excited to get to it and I thought it was a great time. The writing was good. It had like this quirky flair that definitely felt like it fit the murder mystery vibe. It was absolutely a murder mystery Agatha Christie, even not really a one by one style per se, but definitely gave me those vibes. I thought that the mystery was interesting. I could see the threads as they were trying to put everything together and the hints that were there, which I really enjoyed. I didn't guess the murderer right away, but I did have thoughts. So I was like not overly surprised, but still pleasantly surprised all at the same time, which I really enjoyed. And I don't really know what makes this not like a read that just gripped me, held me, and I couldn't stop, couldn't put it down. I enjoyed it, but I was never really pulled in by the characters. I never really was like, like rooting for anyone in particular or had like strong feelings toward anyone. I was just along for the ride and enjoying it and I think it did exactly what it set out to do. So for my rating on this one, I think I'm going to give the characters a seven and a half. I'm also going to give the plot a seven and a half. The world building was an eight. I thought that the in the integration of like supernatural creatures into a very traditional murder mystery was a lot of fun. I think that she set the lamplight and the gas lamp setting very, very well. So I enjoyed that. 
the writing I think I'm going to give a seven although I really enjoyed it there were a couple of things that I had issues with mostly just in the way some stuff was phrased seemed a little bit clunky to me but as a general rule I do think it was well written and enjoyment I think is also going to be a seven maybe a 7.5 because I did really enjoy my time with it I just there was something about it that kept me from being like yes four star feels so this one's going to end up getting a 7.5, which is a super high three star. Honestly, that is almost a four star. I think that it was really good and it was definitely my favorite of the batch that I've read so far. So I will consider this vlog a win. If you guys want to know more about what SPFBO is about, what my team is about, I will link that information down in the description box for you guys. I will have Mark Lawrence's blog linked down below, which has all of the official scores. Because remember, this is not an official, official thing. It's just something for fun that we're doing as a group. So I will link the official results down in the description box for you guys to go check out. Please give all of the hosts, the blogs, a follow, some shout out, some love, because they put a lot of hard work work into this as well as my lovely Mel's takeover participants will be down there as well. And I think that that's everything. If you guys are curious what I thought about my original SPFBO batch, I will leave that here for you guys. If you want to know more about Mel's takeover, that will be here. And thank you guys so very much for watching. Leave me a leave me a lamp emoji of some sort. Is that a thing? Hopefully that's a thing in honor of murder at Spindle Manor. As always, links to my Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, and Goodreads are all in the description box below. If you guys will give me a big thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe if you want to. I will see you next time. Bye!